Hi, I'm Liesl from The Homeschool Den, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about writing workshops and why we wound up using a writing workshop in our homeschool and kind of how we structured that and stuff. So I made some slides um, to kind of share some of, of that stuff. So let me go ahead and get that started and, um, and walk you through what we did. So you can see down there in the corner is our writing workshop. And I want to tell you kind of some background to why, uh, why we started using this. So writing was tough in our homeschool. My son was kind of a reluctant writer and we did all the things um, that I, I thought we were supposed to do. You know, we um, wrote, you know, strong sentences and, and wrote paragraphs and um, we did handwriting and copy work by copyright. Um, copy work, I mean, um, you know, like, this over here on the right hand side is um, is uh, like some copy work to um, some famous things like a stitch in time saves nine. We also did like ancient Greece and different things like that. Um, we used some pretty popular writing curriculums. I had also purchased various things off Amazon like teacher created resources. Um, we used writing prompts, but I would get from my son, I don't know, I, that, I don't like this story, I don't want to write about that. Um, and it just, it just wasn't working until I read this book called No More, I'm Done. I really loved it. Um, the author's name is Jennifer Jacobson, and I, I really liked the message she had. So she started out with this story, and hers is a little different because, of course, she's in a classroom. Um, but she started out with this story saying she, she wrote something on the board saying, um, write about, you know, write about your favorite pet or your, your pet animal. And so someone raised their hand and they were like, but I don't have a pet. And then someone else raised their hand and said, you know, my pet died. And someone else raised their hand and, and was like, I have a pencil. And she would like go from question to question and her attention was split. She tried to get like the materials they needed or whatever and just um, things were not going well for her during writing time. Um, and so, uh, like what she talked about was using good literature as a model for writing and then letting the students like go from there. So, um, so they would, you know, read good books and, and learn from these authors. Um, and I loved that premise of using mentor texts. I think I skipped a slide, um, but uh, like I was going to say, so after I finished this book, I read other books kind of related to that about mentor texts. There was another one um, about nonfiction mentor texts. And um, in the middle was another one I read um, about writing like kind of in the middle grades, six to eighth. So I just read and read and read, but I was really sold on the idea of a writing workshop. Um, so mentor text, you're learning from the best authors who have spent years and years and years honing their craft, right? And so as teachers or as educators, um, we have the, our students really zone in on something. Maybe it's a character, the plot, like the mood, um, or rhyming, and then um, you can have the students like try those techniques out for themselves, or um, or they can just go on and write about you know what what they're interested in. It kind of gives them the reins to um, to to write the way that they want to. The, the awesome thing about the writing workshop is it's bringing in all these really well-known authors, you know, everyone from Dr. Seuss and Eric Carle to Shel Sil Silverstein and Patricia Polacco. Uh, I mean, you probably recognize all of these books yourself. So um, you find like, you know, just something you really want to highlight. Maybe it's the mood or maybe it's the story arc, um, the rhyming or whatever, and then you go on for from, from there. So um, let me talk about how um, we set up the writing workshop in our home. Um, there are th kind of three elements to that. Obviously, uh, you need a good space. And so we had a designated writing workshop area. Like for many, many years, we would go to the same spot. That way, like everybody mentally kind of clued in that 
it's writing time now and um, and we had everything we needed right there. We had all the materials right on hand and we had a really, really good routine. Um, so down on the bottom, um, up popped this picture of how I transformed the space. Honest, it probably wasn't quite this messy. Who knows, maybe it was, you know, the kids were little <laughs> at that time um, and you know, you just dump things and go, right? So I transformed this space that really wasn't being used um, and you can see we have like books there like that were specifically about writing. Um, that's a that's our spelling program. And then on the right hand side there was just a little space, but that had all our writing um, materials. So you can see there's pencils and pens, colored pencils. Um, like I had three kids, so each um, each of my kids put their writing journal in there, um, and we had a date stamp that they always like loved. You know, using the date stamp to stamp their notebooks, which was really nice for me because then later, and even for them later, we could kind of go and see how old they were when they wrote, you know, in their journals. And then we always had a timer. I also, um, in the corner there, I had all kinds of resources, um, just different books and stuff. So for example, um, when my daughter was little, I don't know if you can see this, but we had this series that was really geared towards beginning writers because, um, you know, you might have a scene, let's see, uh, like a desert island. Let's see if you can see that. Um, and the nice thing about this particular series was that it had like words so that she didn't have to stop me and say, how do you spell mountain or whatever? Because she was about four when we started this. So this was one of the, the um, books we had in our resource area and like a whole slew of other books that I'll talk about in just a sec. Um, we had journal writing prompts for times they got stuck. We had the writing resource pack, um, which had all different kinds of suggestions if they were feeling stuck. So books and resources and that kind of thing, just all at our fingertips. We had a really predictable routine. So I would say to everybody, okay, let's get together. It's writing workshop time and we would just grab our notebooks and our pencils, which were right there because, you know, from our previous um, writing workshop, I made sure that the pencils were sharpened and everything was back, um, you know, where we needed it. Um, some of the time, not all the time, but some of the time we spent time um, reading about writing. So we would um, pull out a book and I can't find it because I think it's in my youngest daughter's room. Um, Gail Carson Levine wrote a book called um, Writing Magic that all three of my kids have read. Then this is her follow-up book, um, Writer to Writer. There's different, like we had um, like unjournaling and how writers work and um, rip the page and this writer's notebook. So we had all, all different kinds of books like that. There were other times that they would read um, like their big, fit, thick, fat literature books, um, you know, uh, at that time. Um, it, I think I usually set the timer for a l just a little, like maybe 10 minutes. Um, and then we would move on to the next step where we would read a, a short book together, one of those children's books that you saw on the previous slide, um, something that I had like selected you know, before we started to, um, <clears throat> to talk about things. So we um, would read the book and then we would do that mini lesson um, where I would talk about a technique. Maybe I would hone in on like quotation marks and we would like read the book and then I would show them, oh, notice how there's quotation marks and commas and, you know, periods and stuff. Some of the time, uh, or most of the time, I would have to say, we, I just would say, okay, well, we talked about characters, or we talked about the mood, um, and you can apply that to your writing today, but um, they had their, you know, they, they um, could choose whatever they wanted to do, so um, a lot of the time, that was just a suggestion. Sometimes I, I would say today we're just going to work on uh, practicing, you know, writing a dialogue with quotation marks or something. And then I was saying that we had a routine of really 
predictable set routine. Um, so I used a timer and um, when we first started, the, uh, my, my youngest was about four, um, which meant that my older two were probably either six and eight or seven and nine. So they were pretty, you know, pretty young. And the, I think the first few days, I only set the timer for like three or four minutes. I wanted it to be such a short amount of time that it, that it was so easy for them to, you know, succeed and, and, um, and write something or other. Um, I wanted them to be like, wow, that, that didn't take very long at all. Because like I said, my son was a reluctant writer. And so I, I felt like this had to be like a really rewarding time. So that's why I used the timer. And then I added a minute or two every few days until we were up to, you know, 15 minutes or maybe 20 minutes. And then now when we set the timer, um, I think we're more limited by like all the other subjects that we have to fit into our day. We can easily write for 30 to 40 minutes, um, which is pretty amazing from where we started um, way back when things were, you know, just not going well. Um, I have always written with them and I think that that was a key component um, to the success of a writing workshop, partly because, um, you know, I could say, hey, you can't inter interrupt me because I'm writing too. And I can tell you, I wrote a lot of blog posts over the years um, because I was writing too. I would brainstorm. We had, um, it, I tried to make it really clear there was no talking during, you know, once I hit start, I would say, does anyone have any questions? Is everyone ready to start? We're gonna start the timer. Really honed in that this was time for no talking. They couldn't ask how to spell anything. In fact, um, I would always, um, I would always, uh, if, if they said, how do you spell, you know, like petunia or whatever, I would say, um, you know, just give it your best shot and I'll help you at the end. But um, I'm writing and you really can't interrupt me. Um, and then I also, you know, they were kind of on the little side. You can see uh, my youngest there is is on her tummy. They often wrote like, you know, with their legs up in the air. And so we had strict rules that you can't like slam your feet down. You can't tap. You can't like bug the other person. Your feet or your hands or whatever can't go on somebody else's No, I mean, this all sounds like so silly spelling it out, but I wanted to make the rules really clear to the kids. Um, and then if they were done, if they had to write a quick poem or something that particular time, then they knew that they had to read or maybe reread their poem or write something else and just wait quietly until the timer went off. And, you know, they would grab the timer and look and see, did they have two minutes left or five minutes left or whatever. Um, and they, um, over time, you know, knew just to, to wait quietly until we were all done. Um, and then at the very end, the last step was that most of the time um, we shared what we wrote. So I would share my blog posts and then they would share their, their stories um, or their poem or whatever. It really surprised me early on, like they all wanted to share their stuff, even my son. Um, um, so that was super terrific. I love that. So I wanted to uh, just really quickly go over some of the kinds of mini lessons that you can do. Um, you can talk about finding a topic to write about. One of the books that I remember using was um, Wilfred Gordon, McDonald Partridge. It was about a little boy who got to know um, maybe it was his own grandmother or a neighbor's grandmother who lost her memories. Um, and he was helping her to try to find it. I love that because, um, you know, we talked about how important your own memories are for creating a really powerful story. They give you, um, you know, they give you like topic ideas, they give you maybe a setting um, and things like that. Uh, we talked about creating a writer's notebook, just sometimes like come in and brainstorm all the ideas that you have and write it down so that you don't forget that amazing idea that you have for tomorrow. Um, we talked about focusing on the story and making sure that you're um, not being too broad. So if you want to tell a story about your dog, you don't start with the day you got her as a puppy. You, you talk about last Saturday when it was raining and you opened the door and your dog ran out the door or something. So you want to start very close to where the action is. 
Um, we talked about how to start a story, you know, drawing the reader in and having um, like a, a good hook to get your reader really excited about what they're reading. And then all, all the things that you can probably think of, developing a good character, using good verbs, having, um, knowing what your setting is, like where it's taking place and when, and what kind of clothes your characters will wear. Um, show don't tell, which is like, you know, make sure that you're creating a moving picture for your reader. Talk about what is suspense and how do you make your reader like want to keep reading your story and climax. We um, did a mini lesson on writing scary stories and that's, you can see that's a free printable um, on the blog and what your feelings look like. So if you're um, sad, you know, not just saying he was sad, but saying like, you know, his eyes welled with tears and he just started heaving quietly or, you know, the typical, he was red in the face, he was so angry. We did um, nature journaling. We like would take writing outside sometimes and you can see there they are. They were really little at the time. We did others, you know, where we had, they had to gather something in nature and write a story about that and there are just so many different things you can do um, I've got a list here like you can talk about similes and metaphors or the point of view and maybe each day for a week you do it from the first person meaning like you know you like the story is written by the character I did this and I went to the store or the second person or the third person you, know, you remember all that right um, so there are just so many things that you can introduce your kids to slowly and again just using um, great children's literature to do so. I mean the advantage of, of using children's literature even for like older kids who are kind of beyond that they're like oh, I don't want to read this children's book but like even in fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth grade you know you've got the whole story and the story arc from beginning to end and you know you can talk to your students about how you know, these authors have like spent years, you know, trying to work on, um, you know, incorporating different devices into their, into their works too. Um, so I think you probably had a chance to, to read these, um, like creating the mood, is, is it a dark, stormy, dreary thing? Is it, uh, is it a happy day, you know? Um, and then eventually trying to build in things like foreshadowing. Um, you can talk about the big novels that you're reading together like Harry Potter and, and, and all that. So um, that was why the writing workshop worked so well for us. We had a really good routine, um, but we had like an environment that was like super happy. I mean, for a long time, writing became my kids' favorite part of the day, which shocked me from where we started. Um, it was a predictable time. You know, everyone knew that, like, once the timer came out, we were writing. I mean, sometimes I wish that other parts of our day went as smoothly um, as the writing workshop did. So um, the sense of teamwork was amazing because I had a little one, um, you know, when we first started, she's not so little anymore. Um, but like she wrote every day, she wrote a chapter to her book. And, um, so it was a book, it was a story that went on and on about a cat and the cat sat and there was a rat. And I think it wound up being 15 chapters long, but that showed, you know, my older two perseverance, she was working on this story, you know, every, every day. One thing, um, you know, of course we all, I mean, my kids had it and I had it too. Um, and, and I would say, oh, I'm stuck. I have no idea what to write about, but we all get that. Um, and so I had some tools at my disposal that I could hand the kids. Um, not only, I think I showed you earlier, you know, this, this series, unfortunately, I think it's out of print, but you might be able to find these on, on Amazon if you have, um, little kids, you know, the, the start writing a series with the big pictures that I was showing you. Um, I also had some writing resources with different ideas, you know, that they could um, like just go do some research about an animal, like choose an animal from Africa that you really want to learn a little bit more or create a brochure like, you know, about traveling somewhere or uh, write a letter to grandma um, stuff. So just all the lots of little ideas that, you know, you could come up with a checklist like that um, 
for yourself as well. And also, um, I talked, sorry, that's my cat's tail. <laughs> um, you know, I talked about the different genres of writing and that they, that they could, um, that they could, you know, maybe write a sci-fi uh, story or write a speech, you know, of someone famous that we were talking about in history or to try something completely different and write a play. Um, so these were all, you know, I had a list of, of these on hand and, um, you know, we did poetry and limericks and um, like I remember at one point my, uh, my middle daughter um, was blogging and she created her own little blog. I used one of those platforms, um, you know, that's for um, younger kids. I didn't actually, I'm going to set my cat down here. Um, I didn't actually, you know, use a, a, a public, there she is again, um, a public platform for that. But uh, someone had asked me, you know, for the writing workshop, did they have to do research papers and essays? Um, my kids have had to do a lot of, of essay writing and, you know, I was uh, an AP history teacher and if you ever took an AP class, you know that the essay was one of the most important components of that. So I spent um, a lot of my time um, you know, as when I was in the classroom teaching essay writing techniques. So for sure, I feel like essay writing and research writing is an important writing part portion of it. Um, but with the exception of like uh, when the kids were, you know, kind of more in high school, um, the writing workshop was not, did not incorporate that. We worked on essays and research papers at other points, either during our homeschool day or whatever. Um, I kind of, um, built up their skills so for a long time they had they could um, I had like um, sheets of paper where they could research a topic and write about it um, that often had pictures um, when they were little um, and you know maybe it had to do with rainforest animal or something um, kind of the next step up I had my kids um, create posters um, and I thought about bringing one here um, to show you but yeah you know you just like uh, I think oh I know one of my daughters <laughs> did a poster on medieval medicine and she researched medieval medicine and I think she, you know, on her poster she included a word hunt and she drew pictures um, and things like that so that's probably when they were in third fourth fifth grade they did posters um, eventually we stepped them and they did PowerPoint presentations so I remember like kind of the first time they did it they just had I said that they had to include pictures so that they knew how to upload pictures and then I made them uh, learn how to use animation and they are better at it than than I am you know you, you can see that I'm using animation here to scroll to the next idea but they like had things flying in and I mean I was like how did you do that um, we also did portfolio projects and um, I know I don't want to go on too long portfolio project is let's say you're studying um, the Civil War then you might have different kinds of writing elements that all kind of go around a particular history theme so um, you might have a letter to the editor you might have um, them create a political cartoon, like have them look at old political cartoons and do that. You might have like a letter from someone from that period writing to, you know, their uncle or something about their experiences. You might have them um, do a biography or like an autobiography. So just it's just taking different kinds of elements and including it um, in one big project. Oh, usually a history portfolio, I had them include um, like a timeline uh, and, and pictures and things like that. Um, so like I said, my kids have had to do essays. In fact, if you look here to the right, um, in ninth grade, uh, we, we really focused on, on essay writing. So they, we did like compare contrast essays for a while. I think that was when my son, um, there, I had a great resource for that. So they had to take a position and I had him write on one side of the issue one for one stretch, you know, maybe it was a week and then they had to write on the other side of the issue. Um, 
So my youngest hasn't done that yet. She's only going, she's going into seventh grade. And then I also um, had my, have started having my kids do timed essay questions. Again, I think that's in a really important skill, but that was not part of the writing workshop and they've had to do some research papers. So um, I think that, you know, I, I kind of tried to keep all of this in mind. So, um, so I wanted to make sure that they could do research. I wanted to make sure, you know, when they were little that they knew how to do formal and informal letters, do use different writing tools, um, and like learn how to take notes really well, um, how to create resumes, you know, that, that kind of thing. I always had that in the back of my mind um, as we were like building things you know like building our skills through the years um just kind of make it clear so the writing workshop also was separate from spelling and i, I alluded to that fact you know when i was talking about our strict rules um we used a program called all about spelling that i loved oh my gosh i love love this program it was um interactive because it has those tiles that you see and it um really went through all the rules so if you're looking for a spelling program i would definitely look into all about spelling i think there's six or seven books in the series and we have them all um so then uh, you know we use that um we use that program and then i made a lot of games um because you know i wanted to make sure that they were practicing things so um so there you can see there's bingo games and I made board games um, and there were sorting cards and things like that and that was all kind of their spelling time. We also did grammar and we tended to do um, spelling in the fall and then we focused on grammar in the spring semester just because you know, there's only so much you can do in your homeschool day. So um, by grammar, you know, I mean all the n normal stuff. So that uh, I have so many free resources because if I made something for my kids, then I threw it up on the blog for you. Um, so the one there is like it, homophones, like it's the difference between it's and it's, it is, you know, with the contraction there, 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 you know, four, four, um, we, um, went over the comma rules every year there are like you know 11 or 12 different rules and and um we went over the use of italics and underlining um and uh you know like irregular nouns irregular verbs um and the use of semicolons i mean all the different gram grammar topics uh, capital letters you know all that stuff and we like i said we would focus on that generally during um, during the spring semester. And um, so literature kind of took three forms in our homeschool too. We had independent reading time where my kids almost always had a novel that they were um, reading. They could choose what they wanted to when they were little and then when they were older. Like I had a whole list of all kinds of books that they could choose from, but I was like, you know, you should probably read some of these classics. So my son and older daughter um, have read a lot of the, the classics now. Um, we also have done read-alouds and and even like not not just from the time they were I mean of course we did a lot when they were like in preschool and they couldn't read but we continued to read all throughout we always had a book going and so just in the last couple of years we've read um, some books that have to do with our history um, history we were doing modern history so we read the jungle and all quiet on the western front and the great gatsby we um actually we did <laughs> the grapes of wrath on a book on tape but we all listened to that um and then i think we swung over because we did the grapes of wrath and so we talked about um Pearl, um, like what was going on in China. Uh, we read Pearl Buck's um, The Good Earth. And from there, we were kind of on China. We studied modern China a little bit and we read Red Scarf Girl. And, and I mean, that, that's a lot of books. Um, so I really recommend that you read aloud with your kids. It's been a great portion of our day. Not part of the writing workshop, but I kind of wanted to address that. And then um, I think I alluded to the fact that we use these literature textbooks. Sometimes we use those um, when we were um, in that five to 10 minutes before our writing workshop um, started. And um, my middle daughter loved these. You know, they're stories and um, chapter excerpts and plays and different, different things like that. And she 
took them like, you know, candy. She just like read and read and read. That's why there are like so many <laughs> on that shelf. Um, and she would often, what I liked about, you know, the complaint about them is that they only take, say, a chapter. But what I found awesome was, you know, I remember she read the a chapter or two from Flowers for Algernon. And she was like, Mom, get me that book. I have to read it. And that's the same thing for... Um, I think there was one called Bud, Not Buddy, or something like that, and she would just say, get me that book, I need to read it. So um, that's how we handled literature. Um, but that's about it. So that was our writing workshop, and you can see from the pictures here that, um, you know, we've done writing as a family from the time they were really little. The, oh, this is the book, can you see down here, The Cat, the cat Was Wet? That was a, um, my youngest uh, writing you know, when she was just like four or so. And here they are. I think uh, my middle daughter there is, uh, we were talking about similes and metaphors, and I think that's what she was, was doing there. So it's been so effective, um, like all through the years. So some final tips, let me run through them um, really quickly again. Have a space um, where it happens right every day. I mean, being consistent was really important both to, to implementing the routine and just like, um, you know, creating that joy of writing. Um, I really went into the writing sharp workshop like once I set this up like very positive and upbeat and try to be like enthusiastic about it um, and 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 you know made sure that we had good rituals and routines um, I already talked about how I was a model and the fact that we wrote together and that meant that everybody learned from everybody else whether that was you know that even um, my youngest could 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 write um, to you know some powerful pieces uh, that my kids wrote over over the years. Um, I tried to make sure that you know no one complained. You know instead of when they were like I don't know what to write, I'd be like oh that's so true. Everybody goes through that. And I just tried to nip it in the bud like. Um, say you're gonna have a fantastic idea tomorrow and it, it's okay to have a tough time today um, then I already went over like how I dealt with um, you know how do you spell this I said you know you need to figure it out yourself because I'm writing too um, and the upshot of it all is just to persevere and it takes years to hone, to hone a, a skill like this um, and writing you know, it becomes easier with time. And so we just stuck with it and, and tried to make the best of it. So um, I kind of alluded to this. I created a, a, a writing resource bundle that has all, over 300 pages of materials. Um, it's pretty inexpensive. I want to say it's under $8. And there's five different PDFs. If you're interested, you can find that at homeschoolden.com slash writing dash workshop or maybe you're on that page already and just like scroll on below and you can see what's included in that and um again i'm liesel from the homeschool den and if you want to check out any of our other resources um and units on science and history and german and spanish you can go to homeschoolden.com slash store so Thanks for spending this time with me and I will catch you next time.